Hey everyone, it's Richard again from Troll Line Fishing. So I did a, you know, favorite musky crank bait, dying clock. Uh, like my favorite trolling musky crank baits, inexpensive ones, some that are a little bit crazier. Um, and it had a good little response. So I thought I'd do another video of different things that I like to keep in my boat when I'm musky fishing because, you know, musky can get really hectic. And, you know, these are just, I, honestly, some of the things that I think you got to keep in your boat, um, if you're or get for your boat if you are going to pursue musky you know they are kind of a pain um so i'm going to talk about some of the different pliers uh some of the things i like to have spare in my boat as well so first i'll start off with bolt cutters um or hook cutters whatever you want to call them they don't have to be nip hacks but i use nip hacks they're probably the easiest to cut hooks with they cut like butter uh nice little uh, they have ones that have a little lanyard attachment to them so that you don't drop them in the water because I've seen that where someone has taken out a hook, tossed their hooks, like their hook things in the water and held the fish in their hand and looked at their hook sink and looked at their fish in their hand realizing they threw the wrong thing back. So I have a nice set of bolt cutters in the boat. Uh, Steve's got one with him as well. I keep one with me so we don't have to you know go back and forth. He brings a little like work pouch with them too so if I ever somehow break them we have another set um but bolt cutters especially for those hard to reach hooks and you know sometimes water temps might be a little bit too high and you know you just want to get a musky back uh back going again so we cut the hooks and just replace them so now obviously once you cut the hooks you need replacement hooks so we'd like to keep a plethora of hooks and even split rings for whatever reason we keep those in the boat too just in case you want to change something up or whatever the reason is so i would say if you have bolt cutters you need to have hooks and god forbid something happens have some split rings so that's just some of the things that i like to keep my boat extra when musky fishing some of those things um also needle nose pliers i actually keep two sets of these in my boat i keep one like this and then i have a fishing one that i bought a cuda set i believe they were no shimano no what were they they whatever they were they're a type like this just you can get your hand away from the fish because I know Steve got bit before um, and we were using 14 inch pliers or 12 inch pliers. Sometimes it's just better to have your hand away from that hook, um, especially with a musky, how crazy they can go. Um, you know how powerful some of these fish are. Um, I don't have it physically here, but you a net. One of the first, uh, you know what, probably the first, and then these pliers would be a proper musky net. Uh, me and Steve used the Drifter XL. It was $149.99 Canadian at sale, but you can get it on sale. <laughs> I love saying that. Um, you can get it on their 20% off sale if they have it in stock, so you save a bit of money. It's the cheapest one I've seen that has good size. You can put it over the side of your boat. The, the fish is completely in the water. You can do what you got to do. Get set up. You're not in a rush now because the fish is sitting flat in the water. Um, I have a Frabo power catch. I got it on sale regular. I think it was two something and I got it on sale for like 170 ish plus tax. So it was just under 200 or something like that. If I'm not mistaken after, I think it was shipped to my house at 195, whatever the case may be. It was more than that. I got it less. Um, but we use those two just because keeping these fish safe is one of the biggest things that allows this sport to continuously grow and get better. Um, you know, you talk to some of the old fishing vets, they remember just dragging a muskie along their boat when they caught it. Like it's, it's, they weren't something they took care of. And now doing this, it's allowed the fish to grow. Like I think there's been some big fish caught in the recent years. Uh, obviously we haven't broken a record, but you know how they say about those records and how, you know, they're not true or this and that. Um, but Anyways, it, it's going to help the sport to continue on into generations, you know, so my kids, uh, their kids can continue to fish for some big musky. Um, now, these aren't split ring pliers. They're supposed to be split ring pliers, um, but split ring pliers have like the little tooth on them. So you can, you know, take those apart and put them on your hook properly or a hook onto them again. You need those as well, especially if you're cutting hooks. So you're not trying to pull them apart with pliers because that's how you stab yourself um i've stabbed myself so many times with musky hooks and they are always the sharpest hooks um i don't have one with me because steve usually keeps it um a file essentially a file that you can just really get into the hooks because sometimes the point breaks or it's not a hundred percent the right way and it just doesn't go in so you know properly maintaining your stuffs um 
is really going to help you I would say seal the deal more on fish, but the muskie are such a pain that even doing hook sharpening and everything, you can still miss them. They're such an elusive fish at times. Um, but those are kind of the items that I would really think. So from the pliers to the extra bag of hooks to, you know, split rings to the net, those are all things that I really, really firmly believe that you need to have in your boat um, when muskie fishing. There's one other thing that a lot of people keep a lot in their boat, which I like to keep, you know, two sets of trolling ones, two sets of casting ones is leaders. I like, I use these ones here at sale. Like they're 18 bucks for two, 150 pound test. Like the, it does the job. This part here isn't a pain in the ass to get into the lures. If you know what I'm talking about, some of the crankbaits. Uh, they only have 18 inches though, which if you want a full three foot, you know, it, they don't have it. I've had great success, 49, 53, I'm thinking what's caught. No, that was on different. 49, 249s, a 44 were caught on these. Like it, don't think it makes that big of a difference, but some guys firmly believe it. So I'm not going to hold you back, but have extra leaders in your boat. Um, I don't like this one. I have a separate one actually in my boat. This is used for ice fishing for pike because pike are a little bit tougher than muskie, I find. Jaw spreaders. So I have a the ones where it's not hooks like this because this actually hurts the fish's, uh, fish's upper lip, I've noticed. Um, the one I have is flat and it's got almost like a, a piece of metal coming off there and it's not pointed. It just opens up to round the mouth. So if you ever need to get in there, once again, tie a lanyard or something through here because through here, because God forbid you drop these in the water. You know, it's depending on how these fish get the hook, it's a pain. You can't always get in with these to get deep to cut a hook because they don't open their mouth. It's it's what they do. So make sure to have these tools in your boat. I really consider getting the tools before you buy the gear. It's like I've said many times, um, our first video me and Steve ever did musky fishing. We were fishing for pike. We always joked around, you know, there's musky in my lake and da da da. I hooked a tiger musky, first musky I ever caught. It was a blast. It was stronger than any of the pike I had caught. It was probably three feet. Like it wasn't even a big guy, maybe 38 at the top end. So for a tiger, it wasn't terrible. Um, but you know, after that, we went to Scugog and I caught my 49 on a 700 series single with Joe Booker. We didn't have anything proper. And, you know, we look back at that as a learning experience. We didn't have the proper net. You know, we didn't have proper pliers, the proper jaw spreaders. So, you know, that's something that right after I said to, to Steve that, you know, this is something if we're going to do, we need to do the proper things. Learn from that. And, you know, I don't think it's really said enough. Buy the net, buy the pliers, buy the jaw spreaders, buy the terminal tackle, I guess it's called. Buy the terminal tackle first. Get all that stuff sorted. I would almost, you know, you can do, you can, you don't need to spend huge amounts on it, but just get the proper gear. The net is the only one that I can really say you can't chintz out on. You can't go buy a big pike net because it won't do it. You know, the Frey Bills, the Drifter XL, those are made specifically for these big predators. So I really tell you, get a good net. And I think that's the biggest. Then then work on your weapons, work on your arsenal, right? It's like I said uh, the other day with my Georgies and some of like my Mike Parker handlebars, you know, the eight, double eights, double nines, double tens. He does single sevens, I believe as well. They're great baits for the price. They can help you get started out. Every muskie loves them. Um, I'll argue to anybody that says that their baits don't work because I know they work. So trust me on that. Uh, and that's about it. I just want to cover some things because I know, you know, some people ask, what should I keep in my boat? What should not? Like, this is just a handful of stuff you should always have in your boat just in case, especially if you want to chase musky. And then, like I said, the, the net is definitely a, a, a must. So if you like these type of videos, guys, and want me to keep doing them, make sure you comment below, subscribe and like this video. Um, hopefully I can start posting more. I'm going to maybe get some pike video this coming weekend. Hopefully I'm going to be up at the cottage. I can get a few cast out. Pike are open all year in the Kawartha. So I'm going to try to bang out a few of them. But anyways, I don't know if my boat's going to be out uh, uh, in time, but we'll see. Uh, thank you so much for tuning in. This is Richard and we'll see you guys hopefully on the next upload.